Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking Soccer. I am Justin Horniker and today we're going to talk about how Zinedine Zidane apparently turned down the US men's national team job. It was reported by Little Quip last week that Zidane had reportedly turned down multiple national team jobs, the main three being US, Brazil, and Spain. And the fact that those three countries are being spoken in the same breath right now is just really speaks to the growth that U.S. soccer is about to see in the next few years. Just with not only, I hate to say success after what we've just witnessed break down between Reina and Berhalter and the aftermath of the U.S. World Cup, but I think it was always a, if they made it out of the group stage, it would be a successful run. So we'll call it a success. But as well as just looking ahead to 2026, the ability to coach a team in the U.S. and build your brand in the U.S. market while being able to be in charge of the golden generation of U.S. soccer going forward. We talk about it all the time, about how this current group of players is going to be heading into their prime for the 2026 World Cup. And the fact that U.S. soccer is taking such big swings shows that they really want to do right by this group of players. Ernie Stewart mentioned in the media call this week that they are overseeing a just complete tactical analysis of what the U.S. national team has looked like under Greg Berhalter. Not to say that's a reprimand of Greg Berhalter's coaching style, but they are legitimately looking at trying to figure out you know what coaching systems are going to work best for this roster so if you look at how Zidane has coached and Zidane is interesting right because he is a Champions League winning manager he got the most out of the midfield of the Casemiro Modric Cruz midfield where he got the most out of Ronaldo as well that's a lot of just like big egos that he was able to successfully manage and tweak and be pragmatic about and do it multiple times for Real Madrid and be successful at Real Madrid Casilla as well. So it's not just that he's done it with top talent, but he's also done it with their kind of two team and their youth team. And he's also studied under Pep and has looked at guidance of a lot of the great managers of this time and clearly has a great soccer mind, football mind, whichever sport we're talking about here today. But as I was saying, it just really goes to show that U.S. soccer is looking for a specific style. Because if you look at the formations that Zendine Zidane has used, especially the most in his time at Real Madrid, it is a 4-3-3 that looks very similar to the 4-3-3 that Greg Berhalter has used over the course of outside of the start of his U.S. men's national team tenure and outside of the game against England, which was that asymmetric 4-4-2 that we were rolling into, which is very interesting because one of the kind of big tactical nuances that Zidane had during that Champions League run with Madrid was that oftentimes he would not just run with the 4-3-3, but he would also roll into a 4-4-2 diamond, which got me thinking if that could be something that U.S. soccer is looking into because the 4-4-2 diamond not only gives you a little bit more tactical flexibility outside of just like how great the MMA midfield has been, but if you have Tyler Adams in the Casemiro role, if you have Unis Musa in the Tony Cruz mold, and then Wilson Weston McKenney there as well, those are three young midfielders who are just going to get better. But if you look at the talent pool in general for U.S. soccer, there is pretty big gap between the midfielders and the attackers especially a lot of our who we think of as midfielders or wingers could play in that you know dual striker role as well so I think it's having that tactical flexibility almost gives you a potential to really play into your strengths which is the amount of great midfielders that we have in our talent pool strikers haven't exactly come through yet although give them time as well so if Zinedine and Zidane is going to turn down the U.S. job, and let's talk about that for an instance, because it has been twisted a little bit in you know the U.S. soccer discourse that this is a rebuke, a rebuke of U.S. soccer by Zidane, but really it was more of a Zidane not being interested in a national team job at this point. And while 
you know, it seems like the jury is out on him coaching the national team, the U.S. national team. It was then reported by people close to Zidane that he was very intrigued by the offer and thinks that it would be a fascinating job to take up. So it's a job that he's interested in. It's just not a job that he wants because he wants to stay in the club game at this point. So you look at, you know, if he's probably the biggest name, biggest free agent name for sure in the world as far as coaching goes. You know, maybe Luis Enrique, but I don't know. Zidane, if you're going by like name value alone, is probably the biggest name out there. Tite for all they done at Brazil. You know, does he still want to be involved in coaching? This seemed kind of like his swan song, just in coaching in general. Luis Enrique, I'm not sure he would want to coach the U.S. just because of the completely different style of the Spanish national team and the U.S. national team, what it's used to as far as how we think of a typical Spain team, which is possession heavy, and how we think of a typical U.S. team, which is kind of a crash course soccer in, in a way. I'm not sure if that matters as much because you know a coach at that level can clearly adapt, but it just shows you that U.S. soccer is looking big and shows you the type of tactical wrinkles that they want out of a manager. And I think that's the big thing, right? Because I, Berhalter, the reason that he hasn't necessarily been you know, thrown out despite being out of contract is that he did show that he had that tactical adaptability, especially during the World Cup. So I guess let's talk about who I think will be the next U.S. men's national team soccer coach. I really don't think Berhalter comes back, especially after the events of this past week. Obviously, I think Zidane turned it down. And I think that U.S. soccer should be looking to bring in a foreign coach. I know in the past, especially after you're in Klinsman, that's been something that they haven't wanted to do. But if you look at, you know, the fact that this whole Claudio Reyna, Greg Berhalter scandal comes out of U.S. soccer nepotism and the reason that it's, you know, been such a hard scandal to really kind of untangle because Jay Berhalter sits on the board of U.S. Soccer. It's because this that generation of player have all gone into either managerial managerial ranks or have gone into you know, U.S. Soccer board members and or have at least won it. You know, you look at Eric Ronaldo, Ronaldo running for U.S. Soccer president. It's they're all just intertwined. So bringing in somebody from outside of U.S. Soccer when you have it just gets rid of some of that bias that, you know, currently is, if it isn't there, is at least kind of perceived by the fans to be there. And I think that's the way to go. Free agent managers, I think, I think Anthony Hudson is probably going to be the caretaker manager, at least for a, a little bit, you know, maybe even two, three, four, five months. So I think you could also be talking about managers that are out of contract at the end of the European season as well. I think that'd be a safe bet, especially with most of your competitive matchups still ways down the line. Your Copa Americas in you know 2024, still plenty of time. And with the 2026 qualifying starting in 2025. So still plenty of time to not rush this. Anthony Story will be fine, as uninspiring as that is, until then. And we just had to hope that the U.S., higher ups keep taking big swings for who exactly is the next men's national team manager so thank you all so much for stopping by let me know down in the comments who you want to see as the next u.s men's national team soccer coach hopefully it's a big name and hopefully it's a name that can show us some real positive growth with these players that are going to be in their prime in some of the best teams in europe anyway folks I've been Justin Horniger. Thank you so much for watching, and we will talk very, very soon.